the stocks catch a break. Fundstrat is out with its 2022 market outlook. The forecast calls for new highs, but it may not be smooth sailing, and they may not come right away. Let's bring in Fast Money friend Tom Lee. Tom's a managing partner of Fundstrat and a CNBC contributor. Tom, always good to see you. Um, ultimately, you're calling for a pretty good year next year, 11 percent or so. But all the gains are going to be in the back half. What happens in the first half? Uh, I think the market's going to struggle with a lot of things you guys just talked about in the first half. You know, it's uh, the supply chain glitches and the way it affects both GDP growth and perceptions of inflation. And we've got the midterm elections that really won't have any visibility until the second half. We've got the Fed tightening and that liftoff might occur at the end of the first half. But in front of that, markets are going to be nervous. And we, of course, have COVID and the various variants and mutations kind of rolling through the both the U.S. and the rest of the world. Um, so I, I think in the first half, it would make sense for markets to be flatter down. But the second half, I think we, we end up having pretty much a, you know, a, a traditional bull market rally. Hey, Tom, it's Tim. How, how about the stocks? And we've talked about this on the show where we've made mention of below the surface. There's a, a lot of stocks that have been in, in heavy bear markets. So beyond correction, um, are, are these stocks that can recover faster in that choppy first half you're talking about? So some of the high multiple tech names, but not necessarily even that, even some of the industrial names. Uh, again, parts of the market that are down 20, 30, 45 percent off of 52 week highs. Uh, yeah, Tim, I, I, I mean, I think there's going to be some relief um, in January because, you know, Omicron came in and, you know, in just a matter of two weeks, went from essentially zero percent of cases to 73 percent. And as you know, in South Africa, it, it burned out after 25 days. So I, I think we're going to be sort of relieved when that happens. And it should help a lot of stocks that got annihilated over the past couple of weeks on the heels of that. But you know, what, will those names bounce and, and hold their gains through the end of 2022? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I just my guess would be first half of 2022 will be very defensive, large cap and defensive. Hey, Tom, it's Jeff Mills. I, I had a quick question. I think your view is that inflation trends a little bit lower next year. I was just wondering what you thought about the impact on commodity prices and then ultimately what that means for the energy sector. I know that you're, you're pretty positive <laughs> on energy going into next year. Yeah, energy is one of our top three groups. Uh, you know, that's because there's a structural shortage of oil um, production versus demand. But I, I think a lot of the inflation we're seeing in 2021 is goods related. You know, four, five out of the five of the six categories contributing to inflation growth are things like used cars, autos, apparel, home furnishing. Just those five are two percentage points of inflation this year. So I think that's what sort of weakens. It's not necessarily commodity prices because commodities are, end up being inputs onto that. But, you know, I, I think oil prices actually are going to distinguish themselves and, and probably rise, actually. Tom, um, amazing work as always. You know, so a couple of these resource names are getting off the mat at a very interesting time in terms of everything we've just talked about. What does that tell you? I'm not looking to play stock market here, but, you know, the resource trades to me significant, you know, talk about this global growth dynamic. Does that make sense? Are these stocks telling us something? Uh, you know, basic material stocks only can rise when they sort of sniff better growth. I do think it's encouraging. I mean, I, I would say one of the surprises in the last couple of days has been the, the, the rally and things that are heavily, heavily impacted by both economic sensitivity and by COVID and you know, maybe the market is already starting to bottom and discounting the fact that Omicron's going to peak soon. But if it is, you know, there'll be a lot of relief because, you know, if you don't have a big rise in mortality, COVID is becoming less dangerous. I mean, I think that's that could be one of the positives that emerge from this. We know you like energy, as you mentioned, uh, for next year, Tom. You also had you liked it last year, and that was an epic call. Um, energy, the top performing sector year to date. And so you're saying in this new note that healthcare is positioned the same way energy is, which would imply a huge rally in next year. What sets up for that? Uh, they, they, you know, we were looking at relative performance and, you know, energy's relative performance argument last year was that the 10 year stretch into into 2021 was one of the worst ever. You know, in fact, we kind of joke that you have to go back to like the whale oil days to find a worse time to own energy stocks. And so Energy equities became orphans. 
but the fundamentals were, were better. And we saw that in 2021. Healthcare has a similar setup, you know, that these groups had a, a huge derating of their PE, but earnings growth has actually been, you know, pretty impressive and, and they are somewhat inflation resistant. So I think that the, there's a potential for their earnings to recover and PE to expand. And that would look a lot like energy in 2021. And, you know, possibly, I mean, I think FANG has the same setup. So I think, you know, FANG and healthcare could have one of those 20, 30% kind of years. Wow. Tom, good, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Tom Lee of Fundstrat. So FANG and healthcare top performers next year. Dan, you buy that? Yeah, I mean, I said it last night. I'd, I'd love to see Fang or whatever I call him, a QQQ. Um, I'd love to see it get hit really hard, get back to an oversold level that it actually had been in on numerous occasions over the course of 2021. Go back to uh, Q1 of this year. Remember how poorly the mega cap tech trade? Apple was down 20% from its highs in January to its lows in uh, February and March. I'd love to see that sort of action. That would be a bit more constructive. And then it also add the XBI, you know, Carter had a note out, Carter Braxton worth of mm -hmm. War Trading this morning, um, talking about the XBI. He actually sees what Tom sees in healthcare. He sees a great technical setup for a bounce um, next year. So that's one I'm going to keep an eye on, too. Yeah, I think it was a relative bottom to the broader healthcare sector. It's money in 2022, is what Carter Worth said of Worth Charting. Um, Guy, you like that? You like the setup here for, for an XBI or IBB? I do. A big cap pharma. Listen, some of these names have obviously languished. As I've said, my wife works at Merck. That stock has been under considerable pressure. But Bristol Myers getting off the mat. Look what that stock's done over the last couple of weeks from 53 up to 61. Eli Lilly, I think, is going to take another run at its all time high. So I think big cap pharma is absolutely a place you can be early next year.